Right. So, politics. All right. All right, we're talking about politics, bro. Okay. So. Boop, 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 boop. So Charlie Kirk came to our campus today, and let me play a few clips of that. Okay, so the time now is around 11.57. It's the last day to register to vote in the state of Nevada. We need your voters. And I think we need to do a better job of elevating this. God bless you, Matthias. Thank you so much. So yeah, it was pretty hectic. I actually thought I had some like aspirations to ask him a few questions. I didn't realize there'd be that many people on campus. Also fairly conservative, fairly like Trump supporting. I thought it was the exact opposite. I thought there was a lot of liberals. I thought I'd be like the odd man out. I'd be like, oh, I'm one of the like 10 people that came to the Charlie Kirk rally. Uh, no, it was actually, um, there's a lot of conservatives there, or at least people who say they're conservatives, or at least people who chanted and cheered when conservative rhetoric was said. And you know, I'm, you know, I don't like labeling myself with specific terms. And I don't like taking sides because if you say something like, "Oh, I'm a liberal," or "Oh, I'm a conservative," I like Trump, I like Kamala, I'm a libertarian, I'm in a green party, or what's the term for green party anyways when you say stuff like that it automatically tells the other person consciously or subconsciously whether you are a friend or whether you are a foe are you here to attack me or are you going to agree with me that's the message they send so you don't i typically avoid trying to say my political party or outright agree with something or make it obvious what i am because ideas can are ideas stand on their own merits. I learned that from uh, Thurman Trees. Ideas stand or fall on their own merits. Just because someone's 12 does not make their ideas invalidated versus someone who's 85. Uh, sure, the 12 year old might have a lot of wrong ideas, but they're wrong ideas. They're not. They're wrong ideas because their internal and external logic does not equate with the real world um but it's not because they are 12 years old that the argument is wrong it's the argument's own fault that it's wrong and that's sort of the mindset i had going into this um because you know charlie kirk he is a political commentator this is what he does is he tells these uh he does uh political commentaries and he just debates people almost for a living. I think that's what he does for a living. But he debates people for a living. Um, and um, I watched his Jubilee video, as I think a lot of people at the rally did. And there was a few things I wanted to talk about. A few things I wanted to challenge him on, which I didn't get to do because there was a lot of fucking people there. Um, but yeah, there was um, people there. So I wrote down a few notes on what I wanted to talk about. Uh, first one says politics does not matter then it's what politics should be and don't deal in the realm of should and should not that's what i'm calling this i'm calling this um what's it called i'm that's what i'm calling this uh talk is what politics should be what politics should be i think politics should be something akin to like i have this idea in my mind it's like so it was the trial of Socrates, which I really, really need to revamp. God, there's so much, like, interesting history out there. Um, and, like, things from the past, because the past is made up of people. And, you know, I'm not special. The ideas I have aren't new. They're made up by someone else that I stole from. You know, I'm not a unique individual. Well, I guess I am somewhat unique. But my ideas that I have are not unique. I almost exclusively steal them from others because... They have a sort of logistical framework, which I call my ideology, which, um, you know, I'm not entirely loyal to. That's another thing I learned is from a 12, uh, <laughs> is a quote from 12 Angry Men, which I actually just recently rewatched. Um, there's a point in the scene where, you know, how, if you haven't seen it already, go watch it, but I'm gonna spoil it. So there's a bunch of guilty people and one of the guilty voters um, one of the guilty votes, funny thing, they don't actually say like a bunch of names in the story. They just refer to each other like you or sir or what's that, etc, etc. But one of the guys who voted guilty started uh, questioning 
uh, one of the other guilty voters or something or agreeing with uh, the um, guy who voted not guilty. And one of the guilty voters says, what are you going on about? Aren't you uh, on our side? And you said something very revealing. He said, I don't believe I have to take a side. Uh, something like that. Something to that effect. Um, and that really stuck out to me because I was like, oh, damn, you're right. You know, it seems like a obvious statement, but, he, you know, he's that's what politics should be. Am I am I wrong? Like you should you shouldn't be devoted to a political party. You know, I I don't think my vote matters. I'm not voting. But if I were to vote, I would vote for not because not because I hate or not because, not, not because, uh, uh, you know, like close people of mine all vote for. It's because. Well, it's not even fair to say what I would, why I would vote for him, because I'm not voting. Uh, I don't think my vote really matters, but that's a topic for another time. We are talking about what politics should be. So we're going to get back on that track. So forget all that election stuff I just talked about. What politics should be. What politics should be is a civil discussion between people. And you know, everyone listening to this, like the five people listening to this are like, fucking obviously. Fucking obviously, Mises, uh, politics should be a civil debate. Well, people like Charlie Kirk and people like Andrew Tate and people like Donald Trump and people like Kamala Harris and people like Ben Shapiro. These people, these people, they're not nice debaters. They're not nice debaters. (laughs) Um, But they, um, The reason I say that is because I feel like when they go into a political discussion, they can't resist the urge to make their opponent feel bad. What do I mean by that? I mean, they go onto the stage with the intention of destroying their, destroying their opponent. Own the libs, as Ben Shapiro would probably say. He wouldn't say that. I would say that. Um, But yeah, they try to go on stage and they try to win the debate and not change people's minds and that's one of the things that i feel like a lot of people want to see more of is they want to see actual good quality debates where we where we actually like try to fix shit and not just like try to beat the other person in a verbal argument That's what I want to see. I want Ben Shapiro to go to college campuses and try to coax and coerce people into uh, seeing how their ideas are wrong or changing his own ideas. Oh shit, Ben Shapiro's ideas can be changed? What? That's fucking crazy. Yeah, well, that's just what I want to see more of. I want to see civil conversations not calling people dumb, not calling them stupid, not calling them irrational or anything to that sort. Not that people directly say it, but they indirectly say it. Uh, like Charlie Kirk, I'll, um, if, I, if, if I could put up a video on screen, like they have better quality cameras than I do. I only took a few videos, but if I, I, I might be able to find one, but there's these sort of like passive aggressive comments he made today. Where he was kind of like jabbing a bit at the other person. Maybe they started it. Maybe they didn't. But I don't want that in political discussion. You know, don't retaliate. Well, I guess there is a time to retaliate. But it's not here. You shouldn't retaliate because that muddies the political waters. You know, it just gets people more polarized, etc, etc. And the reason I'm talking about politics is because it's become much more frequent in daily life due to the election. And so let's go let's go back to my uh, list that I have here of things I wanted to talk about. So we talked about what politics should be. Let's talk about the Machiavellian concept. Don't deal in the realm of should and should nots. Now, this is something that is not my idea. I think it's something I stole from Machiavelli, Machiavelli, hence why I said it. 
Uh, and to be perfectly clear, I have not read any of Machiavelli works. I just watched a 20 minute YouTube video on him. That's basically where I get all of my stuff from is YouTube. Fuck me. But yeah, I watched a YouTube video on him and he, um, and the guy was basically explaining like Machiavelli don't deal don't deal in the world of should and should nots. Don't don't act in accordance with what the world should. Don't try to be a visionary. Act with how the world is. You should be real with the world. Don't act according to an ideology. Act with accordance to the world. Uh, let me think of an example if you can give me a few seconds here. Um, Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, ba. But I'm trying to think. Maybe voting. Maybe voting. Okay. So, maybe voting. Let me see how I. Uh, wait. How, how did we even go back to. Oh, yeah. Politics. I, it was staring me in the face. There was a perfect example right there. Politics. That's what this whole thing is about. Don't deal in the realm of should and should nots. How that applies to politics is I was just talking for around like 15 minutes about what politics should be. But that's not the point. You shouldn't deal in the realm of should and should nots. And here's fucking why. I'm trying to articulate it for me, if you'll bear with me here. So, I don't think people should slander their opponents in debates or in politics. But that's how the game is played. Because when you slander your opponent, it makes it seem like you're winning the debate. And if you go for like these ad hominem attacks without it getting pointed out, they can actually uh, they can actually gain a uh, subsistence, uh, substantial uh, what's it called? Substantial. Uh, well, the crowd supports you if you can get away with that with these like logical fallacies. If you can, uh, hold on, give me one second. Does it does it increase if I talk? up into the mic or if I talk like into the mic I was meaning to ask the guy about that I was like is this a shotgun mic or is this like the front mic by the way I think that the term shotgun mic is so fucking funny because it refers to having to talk directly down and if you think of it as a shotgun and if you talk directly down uh -huh, suicide joke <laughs> very funny <laughs> but anyways what was i talking about oh yeah don't deal in the realm of should and should not so politics should not be like that and by the way if anyone wants to debate me if anyone um like you don't even have to be a youtuber if you just want to get on a call and like just talk and allow me to post onto youtube uh the content i mean i'll debate you um i can't promise i'll see your comments or like if you don't know me personally if you don't reach out but what am i talking about no one's gonna talk to me about this. this is just i run a youtube channel with 300 subscribers and no one watches my fucking videos i got like 10 views on each video nine of which are bots um, trying to blend into the YouTube algorithm saying like, hey, I watch other people other than, you know, Donald Trump's YouTube channel. So don't ban me. I'm real. <laughs> anyway, um, fuck, I keep going off topic. What was I talking about? Don't deal in the realm of should and should nots. Right. Get back on topic. You shouldn't try to slander your opponent. Why shouldn't you try to slander your opponent? Because it clutters the political waters. It makes people more polarized. It has, it, like, ideas can come from both the left and the right. And if you polarize people, they're going to automatically disregard anything the other side has to say. So, and this doesn't just apply to external politics. It, it applies to internal politics internal thoughts you should if if you're thinking in a political debate who's right or who's wrong or who's better or who's worse in your mind right away you're already thinking the wrong way and i i i don't i'm saying that with my chest if you go into a debate already polarized and already deciding who is good and who is bad you are the problem do not think like that and uh fuck i shouldn't say that either because that further polarizes me as being the bad guy me sauce just called me the problem fuck me sauce he doesn't know what he's talking about i'm gonna go watch trump speak i'm gonna go on the view bitch fuck you <laughs> anyways um 
I swear a lot. I swear more than I than I like feel comfortable with. Um, I wonder what that is like. What is swearing actually? Who decided that you know this four letter word is gonna be a bad word? Ooh, you shouldn't say that. Like pickle. Who says pickle isn't a bad word? What makes bad words bad? That's a question for V sauce, not me sauce. V sauce. That's what my channel name is derived from is actually Vsauce because he he was a major uh, inspiration to me. And let's delve back into my childhood, shall we? I know this was about politics, but I'm just kind of rambling. I mean, you clicked on my YouTube channel. This is what you're going to get. So, the reasoning behind my name, Vsauce, is derived from Vsauce. And why did... Why did Michael Stevens call his YouTube channel Vsauce? Well, I don't know. That, I assume you answered. But I do not know. I'm sure, like, I, I, I remember hearing him talk about it, but I forgot about it. But regardless, it's irrelevant. His channel name is Vsauce. And at the time when I created my YouTube channel, when I was, like, 12, he was a big inspiration. Actually, uh, my very first YouTube channel name was Harrison... Tan, T-A-N, or fuck, I edited that part out, uh, but that was my very first uh, YouTube channel, um, and the profile picture was, well, I'm, well, I can say, it was a gif of a chicken riding a steering wheel, if I can find it, I'll put, I'll put it up on the screen, but that was my profile picture, and I had, uh, like, zero channels, and fun fact, that's the channel still today. That was the very first YouTube channel associated with my email address. Um, and it's not the same as my business email, which I made public. Because if this shit ever blows up, like if I ever become popular. Not that I will ever become popular. But if I do, or if someone spams, if someone spams me right now, I don't want it to be spammed with my personal Gmail account, which I use for a lot of important shit. So I put up a burner email, and you can contact me there. Um, but yeah, um, my first ever YouTube channel, the name I came up with uh, because Vsauce was a very big influence on me. Because back then I was going through the whole cynical phase that all like teenagers go through, where they say, fuck you, God is dead. And then they like dance in their like own little edgelord uh, area. They'd be like, yeah, I fucking said it. Um, um, yeah, so they were like, God is dead. Uh, and I was going through that phase. I was going like, God is dead. Logic is the only thing that matters. And that was really important to me. Logic, logic, this logic, that does it make sense. Logically, logically, what do you think about this? Well, logically, if you follow that, blah, 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 blah. If something wasn't related to logic, I didn't think it was true. I wouldn't, I did not like going to school because I was like, well, if you really think about it, you know, why am I even learning this stuff? Blah, blah, blah. I was 13. Uh, so, yeah, that I went through a whole logic phase. Uh, and rightfully so, logic is deeply intertwined with uh, science. Maybe it's even, it's even more deeply intertwined with math, but fuck math because who likes math? Mathematicians like math, so fuck me. But I didn't like math, so we went with science. And I started looking at a bunch of science YouTubers, and one, one I really liked was Vsauce. Uh, and speaking of science YouTubers, I do not like Neil deGrasse Tyson. He says some very, he said, like, he's like, I call him the people's scientist because he's not actually really doing anything. He's just kind of known for narrating Cosmos and being black science guy. And he says some like basic surface level crazy stuff at first time. And he goes on about how fuck God and science this and science that. And I'm like, cool, dude. Uh, you I mean, you're. Not that I think he's a bad guy. Not that, like, I don't, I don't go out of my way to hate Neil deGrasse Tyson. But when I think of scientists, I think of novelty. And I deeply tie that with, like, log logistical no novelty. Is that, did I use the right word there? Anyways, but what he says, like, most of the stuff he says is, uh, is not new. It's not interesting. 
Maybe it is to some people, but personally, I don't find it. Like, I remember seeing this one video of him, like, taking uh, Newton's cradle, cradle full of bowling balls, holding it in front of his face, dropping it, and, you know, the Newton's cradle, it drops, it hits the other bowling balls, another one soars out, hits the top of the arc and it comes swinging back hits the bowling balls when it comes flying towards neil degrasse tyson's face and it doesn't hit him and he's like so why didn't i flinch because the laws of physics and the fucking e equals mc square so blah blah bro it's a newton's cradle we know how basic physics work you don't have to talk about it well maybe mo some people don't know about basic physics but i do and i find it boring i'm like cool you you discovered physics you know i think you're number 1855 baj bajillionth in the world to discover physics like congrats bro but anyways that was my rant about why i don't really like neil degrasse tyson <laughs> but anyways back to vsauce so when I was like that thir in the 13-year-old edgelord cynical god is dead phase, being a nihilist and all, I was like, I was like, well, let's go down the science path. Who's some good scientist? And Vsauce was like Neil deGrasse Tyson, but interesting. He was actually, he was actually, um, like he did some really weird stuff that I was like, that's fucking novel. That's fucking smart. Like, have you ever wanted to know? Like, no, that's a bad example. But Vsauce, you did a lot of strange stuff, science-related, that I liked. Like the cognitive trade-off hypothesis, or that entire series that he had about, uh, fuck, what was it? It was, uh, shoot. It was a YouTube original. It was like his own little personal lucid. Minefield, Minefield. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was smart. I think that was worth the money they put into it. It was just so freaking cool. And so I tried to emulate that. I was like, that is freaking cool. That's science. And um, actually, it takes me back to wh where I created my YouTube channel. I created it because a friend of mine was making YouTube videos. Uh, a really close friend of mine and I was asking him about it I'd be like yo dude those YouTube videos you make are pretty cool how do you do it he was like and this was when I was back like a console gamer he's like oh I take my Xbox a USB stick I stick it in there I uh, and I just record my clips on there and I just take it I put it in an editing software and I just make a video I was like, that's fucking cool. Dad, buy me a USB stick. So my dad bought me a USB stick, and I started making YouTube videos. Uh, one of my first YouTube videos was like, uh, they were like Fortnite compilations. And still, those YouTube videos are one of my, like, the, they're some of my favorite YouTube videos. But I recently privatized a lot of my videos because I like being fucking anonymous. Um, so anything that showed my face, I privatized. I'm not going to delete videos. I don't really like censorship, even though I'm censoring my own content, but that's for privacy. And also it's my own content. So fuck you. So anyways, I can do that. And, uh, anyways, so what we're we talking about? Oh yeah. YouTube channel. So anyways, that's how I got into uh, YouTube. Uh, but I never really answered the question of me sauce why is it that well because it was vsauce because he was my favorite youtube channel and i wanted to start a youtube channel i was like let's take vsauce's name my favorite youtuber and let's just switch it around a bit because what i wanted is i didn't i wanted this to be an original name i wanted it to be mine something i can identify as me you know it, i'm not gonna be fucking cool dragon 97 uh, and even nine, Cool Dragon 97's taken. So you have to be even more niche with it and be like, oh, I'm Cool Dragon 97.5. Not to be confused with Cool Dragon 97.6. That's a completely different person. I wanted something I could strongly agree with. I wanted to create my own sort of identity online. And so I looked for like an hour trying to come up with various iterations. Like I wasn't dead set on Vsauce. Um, like I was trying stuff like you know the the phase killer or stuff like a super cool kid super cool kid that vlogs or something like that. 
Um, but I eventually settled on Vsauce because I was like, oh, Vsauce is my favorite YouTuber and this channel is going to be all about me and what I'm doing. So let's just swap out the V for a me. See, it's sort of like a play on words, you know, like Vsauce, me sauce. And that became my online identity for the next six years. I think it's still going right now because even now in my college discords, I identify as me sauce not this not my own name not this person's name me sauce that is me sometimes i go by sauce sometimes i go by a uh, suspicious sauce some ver variation of sauce because me sauce was taken on discord already so i had to pick something like a few iterations of my own name that i made were um let me list them all so we got sauce we got me sauce suspicious sauce me sauce makes um, what else? I think that's really bad. Oh, secret agent sauce. That's another moniker I go back. But something to do with sauce all the time. So, uh, yeah, that's my YouTube channel. We were originally talking about politics. Fuck. Let me go back to uh, looking at the thing. Uh, so we talked about what politics should be. What the do's, the, the shoulds and should nots in politics. Why you shouldn't deal with them. Um, and reason, once again, to recap that, to recap why, why you shouldn't deal in the realm of should and should nots, you have to deal with the world with how it is, you know, maybe you can change it, but don't go ignoring like, yes, ad hominem attacks do work. They, ga they garner support. They are effective if you don't get called out on them. That's where all the owning the, well, no, owning the libs isn't, uh. I mean, they do make regular good points, but it's done in bad faith. You're not trying to change their mind. They're, you're trying to beat them in an argument. Um, anyways, that's just my thoughts about that. Um, yeah, so what did we talk about? We talked about politics. We talked about the election. We talked about black science man. Uh, and we talked about white science man. And also my YouTube channel. So those are the five things we talked about. Um, we're going to end it here. I'm going to create uh, the chat GPT videos or the Discord uh, video that I'm going to release later today. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I probably deleted it or didn't make it. But anyways, I'm going to try and record that right now. Uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Okay, so literally while I was editing this video, I just found out that Trump was going to hold a rally in Reno. So, uh, stay tuned for that, I guess. Get down, Mr. President! No! <laughs> <laughs>